Thank you guys, it's actually about 4.30 in the morning. Chris has just pulled up outside, so we're going to go off for a stalk. And he's just finishing a cup of coffee. It's absolutely hammering it down, so hopefully that pauses. <laughs> change the dynamic of that. So they'll probably stick to the to the woodland and the edge of the woodland. Right. And uh, not come out into the crops because there's no protection there. Yeah, so they'll be on the fringes kind of working that. Yeah, or they'll just what they what they do is if it's really cold or if it's really horrible, I mean by they spend a lot of the time couched. I mean deer spend a lot of time couched anyway. So the, yeah. the couch warm relatively, you know. Keep the same spot warm. Keep the same spot right, warm, yeah. keep itself dry. It's just running off their back. Okay, how comfy that is. Right. You still got single file. Yeah. Two or three paces back. Right, I stop, you stop. And one sit over. Yeah. Yeah. Right, the dog come too far. Watch the dog. I'll be working the dog. The dog will be in front. Okay. I'm watching the dog. Yeah. Okay. With the first day of stalking being unsuccessful, I knew I had to have some luck on the last one to fill my bag of two row coal bucks. And with the rain hammering down, it wasn't looking like the best opportunity was being presented this morning. I was out with Chris for the stalk, accompanied by Sosha, a fine stalking dog. And we were out on a lovely piece of ground located in a large historical estate. Surrounded by deciduous forest, open fields and intertwining hedge lines, it was a beautifully scenic place to start the morning in, and despite the hard rain, it made for a great hike, glassing and monitoring the surrounding areas for any signs of movement. The weather held wet for some time, and not much evidence of deer was being presented, but we had a good vantage point. Lower ground all around us, but being on an open track meant we had to stay in single file to avoid over silhouetting. The rain eased with an almost deafening silence, which made for much easier glassing. And not moments after further moving down the track, Chris had spotted a movement to our right. Between a narrow ditch and a hardwood copse, two roe deer appeared out of the long undergrowth, prompting me to steady my rifle on the sticks. But disaster struck. I could clearly see that the deer had noticed us and had stood bolt upright, but I couldn't take aim. The scope was fogged up and the parallax was off focus so I was blind. I know I only had moments to take the shot, so in a rushed but silent exchange, Chris adjusted the focus while I cleaned the lens and took aim again, knowing that our time was almost up. It had almost cleared, so another few moments were taken to wipe the lens. And I could finally see the buck, but now the doe was closing in and I had to wait to take a clean and safe shot. She moved. The shot felt solid, but I was unsure if the buck had bolted or if it was the doe. So it was now time to reload and wait nervously. It was then time for Chris to work Sosha and check the shot site. Moments like this always bring a nervous anticipation. Was the shot clean? Did I miss? This was the first time I'd seen a roebuck so close and the sheer adrenaline and panic with the fogged up lens had left me on edge. 
But seeing the reaction of Sosha confirmed my belief that I'd made a good connection with the animal and provided it a swift and humane shot. people get to shoot a beast like that. That is incredible. It's stunning. Old, great face. It's a time to shoot him because he's going back. I've been watching him for three years. Yeah? <laughs> wow. But he's going back now. Thank you, Chris. So does that mean that his genes are starting to get to right? Like, he's spread his genes, he's spread his genes. And he's 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 he's, back, he's he's going what he says going back so he's reached his prime. Right. So he kind of you know, like us, yeah. you know, <laughs> that's sort of 40, 45. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then he's on that. He's on that. Right. Yeah. That steady descent. Oh, beautiful, beautiful book. That's a, that's the best coloration of a book I've seen. Shot in India. Yeah, that is an absolute honour. Thank you so much. To have shot a gold medal buck was beyond any of my wildest dreams, especially for my first ever roe deer, and it came as a shock just how beautiful he was. I can show you some footage of that deer fighting in March in that field there, well, and I thought the two were going to kill each other. Oh, is these the two? Where well, yeah. you said it was just bloodbath? Yeah, these are one of them, and the other one, which is it's just a bit smaller. I honestly thought they were going to kill. I watched them, I've got it on the thing, I watched them for 40 minutes down there and they were just absolutely wow. murderous. And you look at them now, you've never... <laughs> Limped off, I thought. I wasn't even sure one of them would have survived it. Wow. It was, it was brutal. Really? And it was March. That's just a real that was just territorial an aggressive, whack. Yeah. And that's early. They shouldn't be fighting like that then, but that's because they've got two years. Got two books, kind of same age class. Same it's like age. a heavyweight Hang fight. On a minute. Yeah, it, was, it was a world championship them. heavyweight boxing fight. They were grim to watch. <laughs> and they limped off, exhausted. Wow. One went down that way, and he came across him, walked right across in front of me. He was so tired. They just didn't care. They just didn't care. He just, he just knackered from it. I'm off. Can you see that, Ellie, that there's no, no tail on that road here? Mm. Yeah, you've got you've got what's caught. You don't see it as it's not as it's not as it doesn't stand out as much in in summer coat. You've got a lovely fox red summer coat. Yeah. So it kind of all blends in, but in winter that's that's kind of kidney shaped white patch which stands out against the grey sooty coat. Mm. Yeah, it's gone that very so sandy colour, everything yeah, around it. That's called it? a caudal patch, and then you've got a gorget patch on the front, but again, you can't really see it in, in summer coats. Beautiful colour, beautiful coloration, that. Yeah, it is gorgeous. Are you having a shoulder mount of that? Um, I think so. Yeah. I believe so. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> but what I'll do is I'll take the cape from here, and okay. pull that back. Yeah. You know, you bloody are getting it back. <laughs> I can't believe the colour down in there. Uh, how black, it's almost black, isn't it? Perfection, you, 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 you score a rulebook on, on, on against perfection. Right. So what is a measure of what you're looking for is perfection in, yeah. in every sense. And, and one of the factors in that is coloration. And the perfect colour is black. Well, you know, it's, it's, um, and it's unusual for a deer in this area to be as black as that. Is that because you were saying there's the, the peat? It's is the pigment, the colour, the, 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 colour, the colours, the pigmentation in the antler comes from the surroundings, from right. the fraying and rubbing. So like in Aberdeenshire, for example, yeah. is all the peaty ground and you get very black and dark in Huntley. I measure a lot of deer from Huntley and it's very, very black. Right. Antler and it's from, it's from that pigmentation. It's quite unusual for a deer here in Ayrshire to be as dark as that. Yeah. Um, Especially with like... It's just a warrior. Yeah. I mean, Thank you so, so much. You're welcome. What an absolute Pleasure. specimen. So I was really lucky actually this morning to have been blessed to take Just this. let me qualify that. You're out with me. It's not love. No, that's true. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>
Snow is absolutely privileged to take this roebuck this morning. And, uh, the coloration and antler formation on that is just absolutely incredible. I've never actually seen a roe deer or roebuck this close, so to be this close after taking one is just an honor. So again, thank you, Chris. No, you won't. Thank you so much. As you said, he's, um, it was his time to go because he's, he's going to start going back. Yeah. So part of a wider management plan, it's, uh, it's the time now to, to cull him. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. You're welcome. The medal program, and in fact obtaining one, isn't a boastful display of shooting incredible deer. It's about promoting and celebrating the quality of life that an animal has been able to obtain through the efforts of hunters and gamekeepers. Hunting in itself has never been about a trophy to me. It's about taking part in the management of a truly beautiful species of animal, contributing quality meat to a local community, and most importantly, honouring and respecting the journey our ancestors had to walk to survive. We feel Gralic the carcass, inspected the offal, and I spent time watching Chris inspect the physical glands, liver, and other identifiables. Well, that's your mesentery lymph node chain. That's the lymph node chain. Okay. So that's one of the major, one of the primary lymph nodes there. We'll do the head back in the larder. Okay. So when that feels good and smooth like that. Yeah. So we've got a lovely plum colour. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> you don't get much better than don't that, do you? Better than that. No hardening around the edges. I was going to say, yeah. No indication of any liver no fluke. Spots, no blistering, blistering inside the clues of the hooves, um, which is none. Check all of those, and then we check the tongue and the mouth again back in the larder. So that's foot and mouth. Perfect. Enjoy them kidneys. Thank you. I actually believe that, guys. So Chris just showed me, brought me through the field gralic, and um, we just did a little bit of inspection on the carcass and or the offal. So uh, yeah, gonna get it back to the larder. And we'll catch up with you then. <laughs> Learning and watching just how Chris carries himself while stalking is educating in itself. And to have field experience with the very same person who I'd completed my DSC one with was an absolute honor. What a view. Really cleared up the weather as well. It's going to be nice today. Thank you so much, Chris. Honestly. No problem. Means the world. No problem. <clears throat> Go check him out, guys. South Ayrshire stalking. South Ayrshire, get it right. South Ayrshire. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this. Come up and stalk in South Ayrshire, guys. Oh, that's right. Good morning, Gervin. Oh, spooky, so you've shot a, an exceptional robot, you know. My mum's hometown. Um, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, she was born Cottage Hospital. Right, yeah, Cottage Hospital. Because I went home and I was like, you can't ever believe us. And Chris lives in Kerbin. Uh, yeah, I was born in Yorkshire. And she was born here and moved to Yorkshire. Yeah. Well, she's got a lot about her. Yeah, she's <laughs> a great woman. <laughs> Beautiful coat. Such a colour, isn't it? I wonder, you know, how it's going to do it. That's okay, so, like a sock, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do a picture Back at the larder, we cleaned the animal and finished off the inspection. This area is a well-stocked, clean and useful space. 
making light work of hanging the carcass and chilling it in the clean environment for its preparation to go to the game dealer and taxidermist respectively. So I had an absolutely amazing morning stalking with Chris and now just back at his place after a really nice bed and breakfast and uh, yeah what an astounding breakfast it was homemade venison sausages black pudding bacon the works i'm just taking a little walk up yonder with my frost river pouch in hand and the reason for that will come clear very soon i've always entertained the thought of living far away in the mountains i feel like so many others that off-grid cabin life calling so to spend a bit of time relaxing on the veranda of such an amazing hunt lodge was a bonus on top of the morning's successful hunt. This place has all the bells and whistles that basic living calls for. A log fire, camp beds and a kitchen. And it felt rude not to spend a bit of time honouring a Scottish tradition, the post-hunt smoking of a pipe. I'm not a man to use a pipe often, and when I do, it's in the company of friends and co-bushcrafters. But what a relaxing way to end what had started off as a very bleak day. With time getting on, it was time for Ellie and I to catch up on some laundry and have a rest before the evening commenced with our final stalk. Getting back out with Graham for a last stalk was a bittersweet feeling. I've been having such great fun learning and stalking with him that I didn't really want it to come to a finish glassing out of the truck over some open hillside there's some kind of plantation forests and broadleaf and open pasture um, so we're just gonna sit here and kind of observe the area and then kind of work our way up and see what see what holds seen a few buzzards as well which is really nice Tonight we were back at the woodland that we'd encountered the red stag in, with the hopes of stumbling across him again. Not only that, but it was a beautiful landscape that I was happy to be in again, offering so many different avenues to approach deer from. The weather was fine and had held dry and sunny for the afternoon, which would hopefully draw the deer out of the cover to feed. Once we'd spotted the roebuck off in the distance, we knew it was a good opportunity to take up and call, hoping to entice the animal further in our direction, if nothing else. With the interweaving valleys, it was hard to know exactly what direction it could have turned, so it made sense to stalk in further after having no luck with the call. Graham spotted movement across the valley, behind a hardwood tree line, at first proving difficult to tell if it was a buck or not.
but after visually confirming the presence of antlers, I could take up aim and steady myself on the animal. Reload, please, reload. It's good, yeah, it's good. I'm an amazing opportunity at a roebuck. It's a really good solid hit, made good contact, so very confident about it. Um, maybe a touch high, but we're just going to go over start the recovery. Um, again, a massive thank you to Graham for finding such a beautiful, beautiful specimen in such a wonderful location as well. With Graham's confirmation of good contact, it was time to start the steady approach across the valley, stumbling across evidence of other bedding sites for deer earlier in the day. As we were closing in on the shot site, it was getting harder in the long grass to determine the exact location. Whenever you change position in the hills, it's easy to lose your perspective and orientation. But with a careful scouring of the area and working towards the visual tree line that acted as a rough landmark, we spotted blood a critical sign for a hit and a powerful aid to guide us a few more feet to the animal itself. Six point yeah, with that six, flag. Yeah. It's a six point, it's a horse. <laughs> Bloody hell, eh, hey, already? Well, Matt, thank you so much. What an amazing buck. Beautiful. In good condition. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so running camouflage. Running through there. Yeah, just can't see it. This time I wanted to take lead with handling the animal, rallicking and inspecting the carcass, so I could really understand the process and do it with Graham's watchful eye and help if needed. This was an honour to do in such a beautiful location, and it felt respectful to Graham, who had been such a wonderful and willing guide. In the field, Gralakin has always been of great interest to me. You're not always going to have the opportunity to hang an animal or do it in a clean environment. So to be able to get the guts out and transport it to somewhere without that extra weight was massively important to me. And again, doing this under Graham's watchful eye was such a great experience. Sometimes a full chance, sometimes a partial chance. Yeah, just gotta make sure they're not pussy or anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And that all Gastrics good. on there. So if they were inflamed like really big, yeah. you'd be worried. Yeah. Yeah. No liver fluke, lovely colour. It's yeah. plain, it's not extended. It's that's not exploring or anything, lovely plum colour. Good. It gets if you want to, you know, fill up. It's a luxury, isn't it? So that's underloaded. It is yeah. underloaded. Yeah. Yeah. 
With the buck rallied and packed away, it was time to carry and feel the weight of the animal on my back, something massively important to me. It's a part of the process of hunting, and although I understand the use of vehicles has become commonplace, there's nothing more well-earned than a packed out, freshly harvested animal to fill the freezer with. The experience in hunting for me is like about coming and doing it. And like being in the landscape, walking around, you know, rifle on the back with someone as skilled as yourself. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's an honor. So. No, it's an honor to meet you. It's a really enjoy it. I like it when it's... No, it's an absolute privilege and an honour to be packing this row out. It gives amazing respect to our ancestors and what they used to have to do. In miles they would travel for some quarry and uh, yeah, just having a little breather, take the weight off my back. I've done some pretty heavy valleys up and down, very undulating terrain but what an absolute send off for a stork here in South Ayrshire. So a big thank you to the lucky hunter. A big thank you to both Chris and Graham from South Ayrshire Stalking. Please, please go check them out on Instagram, both respectively. And yeah, make sure you enter some competitions on the lucky hunter because I feel as lucky as ever. And hopefully one of you guys will too. And an even bigger thank you to Ellie, camera woman down there. She's got a binocular pouch on, which is full of all the camera gear, isn't it? It is indeed. Did you enjoy it? I did. Thank you so much for filming okay. and being a star. That's good. I'm sure it'll be amazing. Actually, just while I'm hiking out of there, there's a little bit of horse's hair. Horse's tail, sorry. And it's one of the oldest plants known to man. Made up of silica, pulls up the silica from those roots. So I'm just gonna cover that back over, but let that carry on its home. So I'm just gonna hike back with this row now to the truck, all out of this woodland. What an amazing opportunity. And we'll get this in the chiller. It was time to head back and put a close to this amazing trip, one that would never have been possible without the Lucky Hunter. I'd won all of this as an inclusive package from the online raffle that they offer every month. I seriously can't tell you all enough to give it a go. And to finish up the trip here in South Ayrshire with two Robux in the freezer meant I really was a Lucky Hunter. With the week stalking done, Ellie and I could now relax together and spend some well-deserved time with a drink and meal by the fire before starting to pack the next day. Hey guys, what an amazing, amazing week we've had up here in Ayrshire with Chris, Chris Dalton and Graham, both amazing stalkers. And uh, yeah, we finished the three nights stay in the bed and breakfast here at Gary Loop. Really, really comfortable and just so welcoming. The breakfasts are absolutely amazing with some of Chris's homemade venison sausages. So tonight we're actually gonna be staying up in Chris's summer house. We're gonna be paying for an extra night um, and they're gonna do breakfast for us. I can't wait, because this place is straight out of like Montana, the USA. Backs onto a lovely bit of woodland. There's a strip of hard woods to the right and then some kind of plantation conifer, which is all kind of spruce and fir behind. It's just gorgeous, surrounded in pasture land and there's just nature all around you. And it's just gonna be a really nice way to unwind relax with Ellie, reminisce all about the hunts that we've just shared together and of course Ellie's first experience deer stalking and she does such a wonderful job filming so 
we're going to spend some time there i'll share some footage with you guys and i just hope you enjoy the rest of the video and our kind of relaxation and enjoyable time here in ayrshire and yeah thanks so much for watching and i hope you've enjoyed so far Having dropped our kit off at the summer house, we decided to head into Ayr and Girvan itself to see some of the local sites, including the Cottage Hospital, the very place that my mother was born, and now been renovated to its former glory but as a private residence. It was eerily nostalgic being in the very place that my mother grew up in, and it was nice to finally make that connection as an adult, having only visited as a very young child. The community garden was in full bloom for the Jubilee and was a nice example of the spirit still present in these places. After getting some supplies, we stopped in at Graham's house to have a little catch up and just say thank you personally for taking us out on so many stalks. It was an absolute pleasure to see his house filled with so many amazing artifacts from all around the world to do with hunting and just cultures spread far and wide. Graham's a humble but very talented hunter and it was a pleasure to spend so much of our time with him on this trip. After a lovely relaxing meal at a nice, tucked away pub, we took a scenic drive through the local area back to the summer house to get the log fire on. We'd be sleeping on the camp beds tonight and would appreciate the gentle warmth that kicks out. And it seemed fitting to start the fire with my new knife and make a few feather sticks, a few of which I left in the basket for the next person to use. Heading back is always the worst part of any overlanding journey. Not only have you got to get back to reality, but you've got to leave a place that started to feel like home, in more ways than one. But the road goes on, and so does life, and it was time to say goodbye to Scotland for this trip. We'd be making one more overnight stop to break the trip up in Matlock, and see some mates who were camping at a site. It was an opportunity we couldn't pass down, and a nice chance to catch up on some sleep and well-deserved rest after a lot of driving over one and a half weeks.
I can't begin to thank you all enough for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this mini-series. I'll be releasing loads of content that I've piled up over the next few weeks and can't wait to share the next adventure with you all. So until next time, stay safe and I'll see you soon.